All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Today is Thursday, correct? And I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Thursday. Either way, it is a good day to paint. So just refreshing my feed, make sure we're all good. Um, this is Paint with Lovejoy, our daily demo. And in today's painting, we're going to be doing a flamingo, and this is a viewer request. So a few things about what you're looking at. Um, on the canvas, you can tell that it's got quite a bit of texture, and you can possibly even see some of the other design um, underneath it. I am using a repurposed, re-gessoed canvas, and these are great for um, practicing painting on canvas. So there's a link in the description box below on how to re-gesso your canvas. So it's a good way to practice a lot. I do want to make a note that if you are making a painting for a friend, please use a, or as a gift, please use a fresh canvas. You don't really want to give your recycled canvases to your friends as gifts. Another thing of what you're looking at is we have our outline on here already, and you've got two options of what you can do today. You can either pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the painting portion of the video, or at the end of today's demo, I will upload the traceable, and you can purchase that, download it, and then with carbon paper, you can transfer that to your canvas. So two options. Um, and the traceable is a nice way for my first time painters to kind of get comfortable with the process of painting. Um, and then that way they don't have to worry about drawing their image on there right away. So for today's painting, we will be using a brush. I'm gonna do kind of a teal background and then we are gonna make the flamingo um, realistic colors with its shades of pinks and maybe some purple shadows in there. So awesome, good morning, Sonia. Thanks for jumping on. And yeah, I think you're painting along, so awesome. All right, so again, I'm using the brushwork. We're gonna go with teal here. And I'm gonna start with a light teal. Oh, I need a little water on my brush. There we go. So to start with your color, you always pull a little bit of white aside, add a tiny amount of your color first, because you can always add more pigment. And it's easier to start with your light colors and then go a little bit darker um, from there compared to making a really dark color and trying to add a bunch of white to go backwards. Okay, so as you're painting, try a few different brush strokes. You kind of have the full width of a brush stroke. You can turn it sideways a little bit smaller. And then my favorite and most of my students' favorite is literally you're just kind of slapping your brush on there, filling up the paint. And that's kind of what I'm gonna do today. I'm in San Diego and we are, um, everybody is staying home, but we also have May gray right now and I do live close to the coastline and it's just kind of depressing. I am solar powered, so I miss the sun already. All right, so we are gonna be going from the edges of this line. And at home, you don't actually have to um, do the black outline on yours. I just do that so you guys at home, while you're watching, can see what the design is um, to make it easier if you're drawing what you see. So as you're filling in your background, if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't worry about getting the exact same shade. A little variety is to your benefit. And each time you mix your color, your brain is taking in that information of what the two individual colors do when they're mixed together. So like I said, don't be upset if you have to mix your color a couple of times. Your brain's taking in a lot of information each time you mix your color. All right. And if you paint anything today, if your background goes over your animal or subject matter color, don't stress out acrylic paint is rather forgiving and all you have to do is just let it dry and then you can put a new color on top of it all right and if you are following along with acrylic paint and you're using student grade paint i do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker and it'll make our blending that we do in the next step a little bit easier and if you're painting on a stretched canvas i am on a flat panel today but if you're on a stretched canvas when you get to the edge, carry that color over the sides, the tops, and the bottom. It'll just look that much cooler on your wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Um, unless you're just doing this as a practice piece, then don't stress about it. Oh, I forgot this little area right here. Oh, and forgot to mention, if you're holding your breath right now, even if you're not painting along, just take a big inhale for me. 
We need to do that a little more often throughout the day and just relax. If you do have any questions today about the painting process, feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I will address it while I'm painting. So now we're gonna do that wet on wet blending. Um, so I'm grabbing a, some of that direct teal, slapping it on there. Let's put a little bit right here and then maybe a portion up there. Then I'm gonna wipe that brush off, wipe off that excess paint. And then just kind of with light pressure and that cross hatching, those X marks, just kind of going back and blending that new color in with the uh, background color. If you find that maybe it's getting way too dark and you need to go back, just grab some of that white. You can slap it right on there and it's literally exactly what you did on your plate to mix your color. You're just kind of playing with it and doing it on your canvas instead. If you feel like finger painting at this part, it's tempting, go right ahead and do that. Acrylic paint is water-based and washes pretty easily. All right, there you go, yep. And if you do that and get some of it on the inside of your uh, design, don't stress. This will be dry by the time I get to that area. Um, because I am painting on a repurposed, regessoed surface, my paint actually dries a lot faster than on a regular canvas. Okay, and then if you want to do that same thing, grab some of that white, slap it where you want it a little bit lighter. If you want to introduce a new color, you can. All right. Hi, Anita. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Oh, good. I'm glad you did the colorful tree. I'm just glad you're painting. I'm glad everybody's painting. We need more stress relieved and relaxed and creative individuals on this planet. And if this is a way for you to get there, then I am happy for you. Okay, so do whatever you want to your background. I'm gonna kind of play with this right here and possibly even step away from your painting and look at it from a distance, just so you can kind of assess what it's gonna look like um, when you hang it on the wall. And when you look at it from a distance, it just kind of gives you a concept or an idea of going, oh, I like this area. Maybe I want to go a little bit darker here. Maybe this is working really well. It kind of opens up that conversation that you get to have with your painting. And that's really the point of painting is you are conversing between what you want to create, yourself, and your abilities at the moment. And your abilities will change. So don't get too frustrated um, if you don't get it on the first try. Very rarely do we get anything on the first try. Okay, I kind of like that. All right, and for this video and any of the videos that you may watch on my channel, um, you don't have to use just paint. If you want to do this with colored pencils or markers or pastels, watercolors, um, pretty much anything that you have. It's just more important that you actually get creative and utilize the tools that you may have at home, especially during this isolation. Okay, so I think we're ready to move into our pink and we're gonna start, do the same thing. We're gonna start with some white, tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red. It goes a long way to make our shade of pink. So again, start off very sparingly and you see how light that kind of comes and then it's like, all right, a little bit more. That's a pretty good color. And again, you're probably going to have to make this two or three times. So don't worry about the exact same shade as long as you come within range. Hey, Rhonda, how's it going? Glad you could join us. Um, but as long as your color is it within range, that is acceptable. So let's see, I think we're actually, we're going to break this up into two segments, three segments. We're going to do the, the body of the flamingo then we'll do the head and then we'll do the beak. So we're going to start on the right hand side and go backwards because I am totally dyslexic and that's just what we're doing for today. So we're going to take that light pink, fill in this whole area and we're going to be building on those wet on wet blending that we were doing in the background. I do like to try to keep with a similar skill throughout the whole video so you get some good comfort with it. And for my beginner and first time painters, um, getting comfortable with that wet on wet blending is a really nice accomplishment and it's a lot of fun to just play with. 
And I guess with that being said, my channel is geared towards more first time and beginner painters. Um, I do have some more in-depth classes on my uh, online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And they're still geared towards beginners, but uh, some of them are monthly courses and you get to dive a little bit deeper into either your value scale for the paint your pet class. And I am going right over that black outline, so it's not there at all. Or I have my intro to palette knife painting and it's a scraping method and you get kind of comfortable with layering your paint in that one, as well as using a very untraditional tool. Though I think in current times, it's becoming a little more traditional. Okay, so fill that whole area in and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add a little bit of white here for the highlight and then we're gonna make a little more distinguishing marks for the feathers. But before we go there, if you're looking at your painting and you've kind of already got like a streak of white, a little bit darker um, or a little bit lighter, kind of play with that and work it into your painting. Don't feel like you have to move your brush a lot. Blend that in. All right, so grabbing that white, same thing, slapping it on there. I'm gonna be kind of heavy handed with that. And then because I want the movement of the feathers kind of going in this direction, kind of going towards that bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna start here and we're gonna be pulling this back. And by moving our brush in this direction, it's giving an indication of the movement, you know, so it's almost as if each time that we do that, it's a feather moving in that direction. And the more that you can kind of have your brush stroke move in the direction, kind of like the Van Gogh or the Monet paintings, but definitely the Van Gogh, moving your brush stroke in the direction kind of creates this energy and this movement across your canvas. Okay, and then we're going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to throw some darker red in here and pull it through, but I won't be going from the top area. Oh, awesome, Sonia. Yeah, the palette knife is a lot of fun. So whenever you are able to join and do it, um, I think right now I have it for 25 bucks for the month, and there's four painting options in there, and you can do all four of them if you want. And then I just recommend you cancel at the end of that month so that way you're not charged again and then you're only um, doing the paintings that you wanted to do. All right, so grabbing a little bit more red, making my pink a little bit darker. If your pink is already pretty dark to begin with, go ahead and just use the straight red, but you definitely wanna go probably four or five shades darker than the first shade you put on there. So we do want kind of a distinct jump. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and about halfway up the wing and then leave a little bit of space. And I left those kind of bold, so I want you to kind of do the same thing, kind of like slapping the color in the background. Then I'm gonna kind of wipe the brush off and where that transition happens, we're gonna soften that a little bit. And in some of the other videos, I have shown a few different methods of blending, but because we want our directions to kind of go this way, I'm gonna stick with just kind of the, um, the longer stroke instead of that stabbing method for the blending. All right, so using kind of medium pressure, because like I said, mine is starting to dry. And if you start getting up into the white, you might want to wipe that brush off again and then move into the next section if you need to. And if you're using paint that dries kind of fast, you can put a touch of water on your brush and that will help with a little bit of the blending. But you don't want to kind of rely on um, always adding water to your brush for blending because that does end up diffusing the paint. It makes it dry a lot faster and you have really kind of a really small window of working time um, with that method. So it's kind of like a last resort if you can't get it to blend, use a little bit of water and you can blend some of that dry paint. Okay, so kind of going back and doing the same thing. The neck is actually a bit darker so it's going to be closer to this last shade that we made. And then we'll go a little bit lighter on the head, a little bit darker right here. And then we'll move into three colors for the beak. So again, I'm mixing to kind of about this color again. And the more that you mix your paint, the more you'll get comfortable with going, all right, glob, glob. Here we go. Here's close to the color I need. So when you are starting out, though, start with your small amount of paint and then work up. 
Okay. So basically going to fill in that whole thing. And again, I'm applying my paint a little bit thicker because it is drying on the swifter side right now. So by applying it a little bit thicker, it gives me a little bit longer time to work with it and do that wet on wet blending. So don't be afraid if you have to adjust your method um, because your paint's drying too fast. Maybe it's not drying fast enough. Maybe you don't have a specific color, but feel free to adapt and adjust to what you need in the moment of creating. And take a big inhale and I say those when I realize I'm holding my breath if you are finding that you are shaky as you go to apply your paint on the canvas exhale as you touch the canvas and you'll be a little less shaky it's the holding of the breath that makes you shaky all right and I'm not really even a pink fan of pink really but it's a very yummy magenta <laughs> I think I have one deep pink shirt like that otherwise I think I'm pretty neutral and blues and teals I like the calm colors a lot okay and again I went over all those black outlines um, just to make sure it was all covered up and if you even need to while you're doing that, if you need to adjust and reshape an edge just to clean it up, go right over your background. It should be dry by now. And if it's not, just give it a little more time to dry. All right. And on the neck of our peacock, it is a little bit shorter hair compared to the body. So we'll do that stabbing method blending for this one. And I think it's just nice to call it the stabbing method. Just by saying that it's kind of stress relieving. All right, so let's see, checking to see if there's any questions. Awesome. Hey, Kat, thanks for joining us. Hope you and the family are doing well. All right, so grabbing that white and we're going to have our highlight kind of on the top. So again, we're just going to slap some of that color on there. We have a little bit right here. I'm going to touch there and then wipe that brush off. And then here we're going to do that stabbing method. I'm gonna hold it kind of sideways. And that actually helps create some, kind of some nice texture. Cause again, on the neck of the flamingo, it's pretty short feathers. All right, and just kind of play with it. Take out any frustrations, any anxiety you have today. Um, we don't usually solve problems with this, but at least you forget about them for a little bit while you're painting. And you feel a little bit better just by doing that. So after, as I'm looking at this now, I actually just diffused a lot of that white. So I'm going to reapply it so it's a little bit brighter white on the edges. So if you need to reapply, don't be afraid to do that. Nothing's wrong with that. And this one I'll just maybe use a little less pressure. There we go. And then we will be doing the same thing with a little bit more of the darker red and I think a little touch of purple because I want a bit more shadow here and a little bit closer towards the beak. And as you're doing this and you've kind of come to the perimeter, just be a little more controlled with that stabbing method so you can kind of keep that nice curve and that more solid line. But if you do need to reshape this, go right ahead, grab your small pointy brush and you can kind of reshape the perimeter. But in painting, adjust to what you need for where you're painting for today. And your painting will adjust. One day it may be super easy, another day it's a little more difficult, maybe another day is somewhere in the middle. That is just part of the process. So try not to get too down on yourself um, when it's a not so awesome day. All right, so I just took some of that red. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm kind of putting where the shadows are and then I'm gonna take a touch of that purple so that way when we do the stabbing method, um, they kind of blend together nicely. And then it's kind of nice to do that and you're not doing it on the plate. All right, so down here you can see, even as I'm adding the red, it's actually not dark enough. So that's where that purple will come into play. 
And at home, if you're following along, even if you're catching this on the replay, all I want you to do is observe the place where I put specific colors and then mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. You are training a lot. Um, you're training your eye-hand coordination. You're looking at what you see on the screen. It's transferring through your body and then you're trying to apply it with your hands. So be kind to yourself as you are getting comfortable with that um, interpretation of information. So now grabbing that purple and again, a little bit of purple will go a long way, so we don't need a whole lot. So I'm just going to dab it in a few areas where I put the red. And then again, wipe that brush off. And then we'll go into that stabbing method. And it will, that purple is going to mix with that red and create kind of a really pretty warmer purple shade. And same thing with the white. If you end up diffusing this too much and need to go back and apply, reapply one of the colors, do not be afraid to do that. Go right ahead. And you could even go back to that first pink, that magenta that we made. If you feel like you lost some of that, you can go back to that color, slap it on there, and then do the same blending method. So don't be afraid to adjust as needed. Grab a little more red for this section. There we go and touch purple not much because that is on the top so a little explaining about i guess what you're looking at and what we just applied to create this nice magical illusion because again you are a magician you're creating this illusion of a 3d object on a flat surface you can create that illusion basically with three shades your highlight was the white this lighter area that we added that's going to be the lightest spot the mid-tone was kind of that first magenta color that we put on. And then the shadow was the purple and the red. So you can kind of create value with three shades. So as you start looking at stuff, maybe look at it and try to focus. Can you identify the lightest spot? Can you identify the darkest spot? And then can you identify the shade in the middle? And if you can do that and start to identify up to nine to 12 different shades, that's called your value scale. And in the Paint Your Pet, um, I introduced the value scale and how to see that in a photograph. Okay, so, so far it looks pretty good. I am gonna be, let's see, as we move into the beak, this is definitely the tip of its black. We've got a little bit of pink right here, and then we have white. So while my brush already kind of has a little bit of the pink color on it, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the light pink and then I'll clean the brush. And I think I gotta add more white paint to my plate. All right, so going back to that really first, that super light pink, we're gonna start right here on that lip line or that mouth line. And we're gonna kind of create a triangle, kind of a tilted triangle with right up here being the tip and the fattest part being at the bottom of the beak. All right, I'm gonna throw some more white on my plate real quick. All right, we got a few more people jumping on. Awesome. Let's see. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Denise. Thanks so much for checking this out. And again, if anybody paints this, if you're painting right now, if you paint it later, email me photos of what you paint. Um, I think I had four or five emails this morning. The sloths from yesterday looked really cute. Um, I had some sea turtles that I saw. And right now I feel panicked and I can't remember the other emails that I read. So when my brain calms down after painting, I'll remember them. But thank you so much for um, sending those. So now I'm actually grabbing just that pure white and filling it in so that we have something on the beak and bringing it up next to that eyeball. And I am overlapping that light pink just a little bit. And because both the paint is wet, it's softening just a touch. And then I'm gonna be moving into that small pointy brush. All right, so before we move into the black down here, I do wanna put a little bit of shading. So by putting that white on there first, we're gonna make a light gray, and we're gonna kinda of do that same wet on wet blending and blend in some shadows. So pull that white aside same thing tiny 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 amount of black goes a long way and that's actually probably even more than i need so sometimes i'll 
put that color right there, leave what's on my brush, and then go to mix my paint. And then if I need to grab more, I can grab it from that little blob. All right, so we don't need a super dark gray. We're just going for some light shading. And I do want you guys to keep it kind of light. I'm gonna go a touch darker in mine so it's a little bit easier. It shows up a little better on the camera. But basically, like I said, you just wanna go kind of a light gray and mimic the place that you see me putting it. And we're gonna go around the eye in just a minute. And as you're working with the pointy brush, you want to kind of mind your pressure. Light pressure is going to create smaller lines or smaller dots, a little more pressure. So definitely want to breathe while you're doing this. And I am just going right around that eyeball. If your pink paint is still wet, um, it is okay to let it dry first before you move into this. Or if you get a little bit of that pink, um, into your white or your gray, just take a paper towel, wipe it off, and then you can reapply. All right, so I'm gonna wipe that brush off, clean it really good. I almost want kind of dry bristles. I don't want too much water on this. And, oops, a little dot right there. Basically gonna do that stabbing method and just mix a little bit of that perimeter of that gray into the white. So it's not just such a sharp line, but you do wanna kind of keep, actually, let me grab some white. You do want to kind of keep um, that shadow, the gray we just placed, kind of solid in its shape. Okay. All right, so let's actually make a darker gray now for the nostril, and then we'll move into black for the bottom of the beak. Actually, before we do the black at the bottom, we're gonna put the eye color in, and then we'll use the black for the pupil. So going a little bit darker, it's kind of a medium gray. We have a nostril hanging out here and it's basically a dash mark. And I'm gonna take that color just a little bit for that line for the opening of the beak and go right over. We are gonna fill that part in with black. All right, and just a touch right here next to the eyeball. Okay, so clean that brush really good. Oh, awesome. Glad you're painting the uh, sun, the palm tree painting. That's uh, Denise. That is my most popular painting on YouTube right now. Cool. And it's totally okay to just observe. Um, actually, I've, I've gotten emails from people and I guess they do that a lot of my videos. They're like, I just want to hear your voice. Tell me to breathe and relax. Um, so more than welcome to do that. <laughs> and even show it up for the live videos. Really, really appreciate it. Um, it's a great support, so thank you. So I realized I was holding my breath and trying to talk at the same time, that did not go well. So basically I took that straight yellow and filled in the eyeball. You can still see where I left the black and you can still kind of see that white catch light. I'm gonna reapply that. So if you happen to go over um, your black catch light or your black pupil or the catch light, don't freak out, you can always reapply. So it was just yellow, and that is the actual eye color of the flamingo, but if you wanna change it, go right ahead. So now we're gonna grab the black. We're gonna fill in the bottom of this beak, another distinguishing characteristic of the flamingos, along with their bright pink colors from their food. I forgot the name of their food. Leave a comment if you know the name of their food that they eat. Awesome. Oh, hey, Jen, thanks for coming on. And Kyla, I'm gl really glad that you enjoy the videos and really glad that you're hanging out for the live one. This is awesome. And seriously, you guys have been the reason why this channel has grown, why I have an online school um, given the whole situation, I'm going to outline the eye and do the pupil, but given the whole world situation, I no longer have my San Diego studio. Um, it's definitely, my business is not recession proof. So we have fully moved into online classes and it has exploded really well, but it has come from the fact that 
all my students online and in San Diego have been so supportive and have enjoyed learning the painting process. All right, so I am reapplying that pupil and I went right over the catch light. We're gonna reapply the catch light in a moment. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that black and kind of on the bottom for this beak line, or really it's the opening of their mouth. And I'm gonna do a little bit on the nose. And if you want, you could outline this. I kind of like it as is, so I'm not gonna do an outline today. But if you wanted to, you could outline all of this. Gives it a slight more kind of bolder pop art-ish feel, um, but totally your call. So I'm gonna clean the brush really quick and we're gonna do a white catch light in the eyeball. And then that will bring us to the conclusion of today's demo. Nice, and I kept it just about 30 minutes. Cool, I had the timer covered, so I didn't know how long I went. Um, I do have a 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time demo for San Diego Humane Society on Friday, uh, tomorrow. And I'll be painting a black and white kitten celebrating their kitten nursery. And you can find that on the San Diego Humane Society Facebook page. It'll be a live feed um, at 2 p.m. All right, so for the catch light, you're gonna kind of grab that daub of white. We're not gonna push it too much um, because we do have that black wet paint of the pupil. So you're gonna just basically touch the canvas and pull your brush right back. And let's say about the 10 o'clock spot is where I put that dot. And it does help to exhale as you touch the canvas to make that dot or talk. You don't want to hold your breath because then you'll be a little bit shakier. All right, guys. So good painting today. Thank you all for showing up and for your support and just everything. I really, really appreciate it. Um, send me photos of what you paint. Check out my online school. And I forgot what tomorrow's subject matter is, but join us for tomorrow's daily demo. If you've got something specific you want me to paint, leave a comment and I will add it as the next one on the list. And if you are curious what I am painting in the future, jump to the main page, scroll down, and you will see the uh, future streams, future live streams. Oh, they eat shrimp. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. Uh, so they eat shrimp to get their coloring like that. All right, so I hope you guys have a great day. I will catch you all tomorrow and stay self healthy and safe as I try to make up a new word. All right, take care. Have a good one.